welcome. You're watching uh, Beat Diabetes. Today we're going to discuss managing pre-diabetes. Now, the number of individuals who've been affected by pre-diabetes is increasing rapidly around the world. The presence of pre-diabetes doesn't mean you have diabetes, but essentially provides you with an option to take corrective action to reverse pre-diabetes and prevent the progression to full-blown type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetes is a serious health condition and individuals with pre-diabetes are at a high risk of developing full-blown diabetes and it is associated with its complications. While many people are still unaware of the seriousness of the condition, a better understanding of pre-diabetes could help with early detection, thereby allowing early intervention and potentially lowering the number of individuals who go on to develop full-blown type 2 diabetes. Getting detected with pre-diabetes provides one with a window to take corrective steps to reverse the condition. You should, however, consult your doctor and follow your doctor's recommendation to make the necessary lifestyle changes as well. There are many myths and queries about diabetes. Today, we have with us a panel of endocrinologists to help you understand some of these doubts and also better navigate pre-diabetes. Joining us, Dr. S.P. Sondhi, Consultant Physician Director, Omnibus Healthcare, Meerut. We have Dr. Ritesh Kumar Agarwal, Consultant Endocrinologist, AMRI Hospital and Shanti Bhavan Multi-Speciality Care, Bhuvaneshwar. Dr. Vedvati Purandare, Consultant Physician and Diabetologist, Chelaram Hospital and Diabetes Care and Multi-Speciality Centre, Pune. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Alka Gandhi, Consultant Diabetologist uh, from the Ayushi Clinic in Mumbai, joining us. Thank you very much, doctors, for sparing your time and being with us. Dr. Gandhi, if I can begin um, by asking you, most people get diagnosed with pre-diabetes when they're undergoing a regular checkup or being diagnosed with an infection. Um, they get this as, you know, a nasty surprise and frequently the first reaction is to panic. Why is this condition called uh, pre-diabetes A and, and how is it different from diabetes actually? It is a tsunami waiting to unleash. We have second largest number of diabetic patients in the world and equally large number of population with pre-diabetes. One in six Indian is having pre-diabetes. So when your blood glucose values are not normal but are not in diabetic range, you are diagnosed as pre-diabetes. So what are these ranges? Fasting blood glucose levels between 100 and 126 milligram per DL, more than 126 would be diabetic. Post prandial or post wheel blood glucose levels between 140 and 199, more than 200 will be diagnosed as diabetic. And HbA1c or three months average blood glucose, more between 5.7 to 6.4 will be classified as pre-diabetes, and more than 6.5 as diabetes. So we have to remember that at 50 to 70 percent people with pre-diabetes develop diabetes over five to 10 years. So if you're diagnosed with pre-diabetes, do not panic. Think it as a time to action. Your body is trying to compensate, but you need to act now to prevent the progression to diabetes. Right, I think that's really important advice uh, there as well. Um, I'll go across to Dr. Purandari now. Uh, what are the criteria for screening for pre-diabetes in asymptomatic adult individuals? Uh, so it is like asking a person, when should I test myself for diabetes, like checking blood glucose level. So the guidelines mention that any adult person that is age above 18 years who is overweight or obese with any one of these risk factors, one being first degree relative having type 2 diabetes. So a 20 year old boy, if he says that my parents have diabetes, should I check for myself for pre-diabetes? The answer is yes. Second risk factor is a girl with polycystic ovarian disease. So PCOD girls uh, above age 18 should be checking themselves for pre-diabetes or diabetes. Any adult who has sedentary lifestyle, sitting on a chair, not doing exercise, the risk of diabetes is high, definitely should screen himself or herself for diabetes. Third is a person who has history of hypertension, that is high blood pressure, should check himself or herself for diabetes. Then a person with high triglyceride levels, which is one type of cholesterol or a fat in the blood and low HDL cholesterol level should check himself or herself for diabetes. And in all, any adult above age 18 who is overweight, obese 
and with risk factors of diabetes should check for diabetes the test is called as glucose tolerance test where a person checks his fasting glucose level consumes a 75 gram of glucose in 200 ml of water and checks after 2 hours and we know that the normal glucose level is a uh, fasting is below 100 100 to 125 is pre diabetes post glucose level normal is 140 mg per deciliter 140 to 199 is pre diabetes and glycosylated hemoglobin which is average of 3 months normal is less than 5.7% and b- below 5.7% and 5.7 to 6.4% is pre diabetes so the answer is all adults watching this beat diabetes on ndtv should check themselves for pre diabetes or diabetes right dr sondi if i can come back to you how serious is the pre diabetes condition and can it cause serious complications yes uh, i was uh, saying that uh, the term prefix the prefix pre in front of the pre diabetes is not to be taken lightly it's a serious health concern the diagnosis of pre diabetes increases the risk of developing many potentially serious illnesses it not only increases the chances of becoming a full fledged diabetic with its own consequences but also increases the chances to have high blood pressure to have bad cholesterol to have heart disease and stroke in one of the studies done in younger individuals it was found out that all young individuals who had a diagnosis of pre diabetes were at two times the risk of heart attacks than others to cap it up it's a very vastly prevalent problem and uh, uh, we don't have exact data for india but at least 30% of american have it and to top it up it's a absolutely asymptomatic uh, disease uh, that means uh, none of them knows that they have it so they have to get it tested so in a nutshell we are dealing with a absolutely asymptomatic widely prevalent but potentially serious illness so it should not be taken lightly all right it shouldn't be taken lightly i think that's uh, the key message over there as well dr agarwal what is the correlation between pre diabetes and insulin resistance yeah so thank you ma'am we are discussing a big topic of pre diabetes and now the guidelines is also they are act now or act early to beat this pre diabetes insulin resistance is a stage where insulin is not able to enter the cell or not able to decrease the blood glucose level and we find out in our day to day practice those group of persons who have obese waist circumference of more than 80 cm or triglyceride high high blood pressure and those group of patient as the dr purendri has said those group of patient who have family history pcod they are having higher risk of insulin resistance which can be calculated by fasting insulin and fasting plasma blood glucose level so those group of patient who have high insulin resistance they have a high risk to develop the glucose intolerance pre diabetes and the conversion into diabetes rate also high in that group of patient so if we act early to prevent or decrease insulin resistance we will decrease the incidence and prevalence of pre diabetes and also we will able to reverse the pre diabetes to a normal population so insulin resistance can be reduced by lifestyle healthy lifestyle changes and weight loss right uh If I can come back to you Dr Gandhi what is the best way to manage pre diabetes uh, you know what are some of the medications for instance that people can use to manage pre diabetes so the best way to manage pre diabetes would be lifestyle changes in diabetes prevention program where they have focused on intensive lifestyle changes leading to weight loss of almost 5 to 7% along with daily exercise of 30 minutes or weekly exercise of 150 minutes and it was seen that there was reduction in new incidence of diabetes by 44% so regular exercise and then dietary modifications reducing the calories reducing the carbohydrates increasing the protein increasing the fiber these are important lifestyle changes along with that you need to avoid smoking have adequate sleep reduce stress but if this lifestyle changes are not enough to produce the desired results that we want then we can use medical treatment 
Metformin is the drug approved, but it has to be individualized and should be taken only after consulting your doctor. Remember, motivation gets you started and habit is what keeps you going. So make healthy lifestyle your habit. Eat less, walk more, sleep well and keep smiling. That is the mantra to prevent free diabetes. Right. Uh, Dr. Sondi, how important are regular doctor follow-ups and regular monitoring of blood glucose levels in people with pre-diabetes? So once the diagnosis is done, how often should you monitor it? Yeah. So actually, we don't have any other option. In a disease which is broadly asymptomatic, having no symptoms, uh, there is just no other way of following up a disease like that. Uh, uh, we have to go in for regular follow-ups with doctors as well as our blood tests. Uh, we want to do it for two reasons. Number one, we want to test our blood glucose, lipids, BP, etc., etc., because as soon as they go out of range, uh, we want to act, and we uh, we don't want to be caught napping. Uh, most of the diabetic associations uh, recommend annual screening. But in practice, we do it more often, maybe three to six monthly, mm-hmm. uh, especially and especially in between if the patient has any intercurrent illness. Uh, this uh, COVID has taught us that, uh, you know, uh, illness, a viral illness like COVID can precipitate diabetes in many of the pre-diabetics. Another reason why we want to regularly follow up is to know the effect of lifestyle modification in or pre-diabetic patient, whether they are working or not working, what is happening to the weight, what is happening to the thing. So uh, it's extremely important to monitor. Actually, the the why we are trying to do it is to actually insert V-E-N-T between pre and diabetes. So we, from pre-diabetes, we want to change it to prevent diabetes. Right. Uh, Dr. Purandare, what is the best eating plan for people with pre-diabetes? So in pre-diabetes, the blood glucose levels are higher than normal, but they are not high enough to be classified as diabetes. And the goal in pre-diabetes is to prevent or delay diabetes or and to achieve the normal glucose levels. Diet and healthy diet plan is the most effective way to prevent type 2 diabetes. We all know that Carbohydrate is one of the micronutrients which has greater impact on glucose levels. So if we eat more carbohydrates, the glucose levels increase. So in pre-diabetes, we tell our patients with pre-diabetes to first meet a registered dietitian who will educate them what, what is the diet plan because we tell them that no food item is banned for them, but its portion will matter henceforth. And better to minimize the simple carbohydrates or avoid them like sugar, jaggery, honey, fruit juices, then it is always good idea to minimize the calories also. So low calorie, low carbohydrate diet plan to achieve around 7% of weight loss uh, as the baseline weight. So healthy diet plan. And second is uh, uh, weight loss and uh, the meal plate which patients have to eat it should have 50 percent of the fibers in the form of vegetables salads 25 percent of the proteins and 25 percent of the carb so any diet plan which is practical sustainable low carb low calorie diet plan will be better to avoid pre uh, diabetes in patients with pre diabetes and recently we had International Pre-Diabetes Day on 14th of August. So such days which will improve awareness about pre-diabetes will definitely help us to reduce the conversion from pre-diabetes to diabetes globally. Right. Uh, So awareness, of course, is key as well. And the other key, uh, Dr. Agarwal, is stress management. So what is the role of stress management, uh, you know, and the cause of pre-diabetes? Yeah. So we know what is pre-diabetes with this discussion. So it is not a case of normal and not we are diagnosed the case as diabetes. So in between, if we will mention early with the lifestyle modification, which includes diet exercise and also a stress. So in our day to day life, everyone is passing through the stress. So we classify stress as acute or chronic stress. Acute stress is that where we suddenly require flight fight and fight in that case the hormone which is generated is responsible for 
or give the power to fight with the acute stress. So that is not much responsible for the development or the increase in blood sugar. Chronic stress, that is the uh, insomnia, lack of sleep, work stress, day-to-day -day home stress, and your uh, regular stress that normally what they cause, they increase the corticosteroid hormone or the different gluconeogenic hormone, which is responsible for the increase in the blood sugar from the normal level. That is the pre-diabetes. And this corticosteroid we also seen in our COVID management because they require more steroid and most of the patient during the treatment of COVID also develop diabetes. So this is the major culprit hormone which mostly secreted from the pituitary during the stress. And this chronic stress is mostly responsible for the development of insulin resistance and high blood glucose level. So I will definitely prefer to our audience to decrease the level of stress as early as possible by doing meditation, changing the lifestyle, or participating in the different program, stress management program, which will definitely help to prevent the development of prediabetes. Right. With that, we are going to slip into a very short break, but our panel of expert doctors will continue to be live with us on the other side. Welcome back. Uh, our panel of expert doctors uh, live with us, helping us to understand pre-diabetes. Dr. Gandhi, are there any extra precautions that people with pre-diabetes and other comorbid conditions such as hypertension and obesity should take? Yes, definitely. People with pre-diabetes and other comorbid conditions like obesity and hypertension are at risk for cardiovascular disease, that is heart disease. So they should take extra measures to lose weight in form of daily exercises, maybe cardio or weights, limit the period of inactivity and dietary changes as was explained by Dr. Purandre. So control the portion size and reduce the calorie intake. They should also keep other parameters like blood glucose, blood pressure and cholesterol levels under control. So along with lifestyle, if they may require, they have to take medical treatment for the same. Frequent monitoring of these parameters and screening for com complications are also needed. Follow up with your doctor as advice is very important. Promotion of healthy lifestyle changes should begin at a young age. I would like to end by saying health is an asset. Invest while you can. Right. Uh, very interesting that you raise the point of exercise. Dr. Sondhi, how does exercise help a pre-diabetic uh, patient and what are the kind of exercises that should be done? Yeah. So exercise is a holistic antidote to pre-diabetes. It's almost like paying for a sins which we committed in our life. That means sedentary lifestyle. So exercise, uh, you know, uh, improves the insulin sensitivity, which is at the core of this disease. And uh, just one bout of exercise improves the insulin sensitivity for three to four days. Uh, what does that mean? That means that whatever insulin is available works better. It not only works on that and reduces the blood glucose and blood pressure, but it also works almost on every part of the body, you know, uh, liver, heart, lungs, brain, everywhere. And it also helps in reducing weight. And uh, all of us agree that uh, higher weight and obesity uh, is at the center uh, of the pre-diabetic condition. Uh, there have been uh, long-term follow-up uh, by lifestyle modification, including diet and exercise, uh, to show that if you follow it up diligently for five years or so, you can actually uh, kind of reverse the pre-diabetes. And uh, in many patients and in others, you can actually prevent the onset of new diabetes from happening. That means they will remain pre-diabetic but not become diabetic, full-fledged. Uh, what exercise should be done? Well, it all depends. Uh, if you are uh, starting from the couch, that means you are not an exercise, exercising person, then uh, just start walking. And initially, just start walking at a leisure pace, uh, three or four times in a week, uh, just for 15 to 30 minutes. But soon, 
you should bring it up to around 30 minutes of brisk walking almost five times a week. And then, of course, you can also uh, go on to some aggressive exercises. Uh, one uh, set of exercises which should find its way into your exercise regimen is strength training, uh, either by weights or by uh, resistive bands, because uh, it's very important to uh, develop the bulk of muscle or at least reduce the rate at which the muscles uh, decrease in our body and to improve the quality of muscles. And these are the muscles which will use the extra glucose and the blood glucose will come down. So exercise, I think, is a cornerstone uh, of uh, management of a pre-diabetic. Right, Dr. Purandare, many people believe that it, if something doesn't have carbohydrates, it doesn't affect blood sugar. Is that true? That only carbohydrate-rich food can increase the level of blood glucose? So basically, we eat uh, three macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So carbohydrates have major impact on blood glucose levels. So when we eat carbohydrates, the glucose levels spike like this, and they then they come. Proteins have moderate impact. So proteins have a gradual spike in blood glucose levels, and fats have negligible or no impact on glucose levels. So basically, a person who is eating large amount of carbohydrates, mainly the simple carbohydrates, the glucose spikes would be high, which will increase the postprandial glucose levels. So carbohydrate, a person who has pre-diabetes so should choose more of complex carbohydrates in the form of whole grains, vegetables and fruits and should avoid or minimize the intake of simple carbohydrates. The proteins have to be in moderation and fats Actually, they don't have major impact on glucose levels. So if a person is eating less carbohydrates or patients on keto diet, the glucose levels are generated from proteins and fats, which is called as gluconeogenesis. So ultimately, carbs having major impact, proteins having moderate impact, and fats having negligible or no impact on glucose levels. So these ideas patients have to keep in mind when they have pre-diabetes and work towards it. So when they follow healthy lifestyle in pre-diabetes, they avoid diabetes. So following healthy lifestyle would be saying no to diabetes in subjects who have pre-diabetes. All right, we'll end uh, this show on that note. Thank you doctors very much for joining us.